truly not a competition. It's more of a display. And then at the end of the year, we have a photojournalism competition. Uh, on September 24th, we have our first print competition. That will be a nature competition. Uh, for print competitions, the deadline is about 7.20 to 7.25, the night of the competition. Uh, on October 1st, we have a B competition. That will also be a print. And B competitions are designed for those that are beginners, uh, students in the fundamentals class or other classes, uh, and people that are basically just starting out with photography. So um, if you're in the B competition, then you can't enter the main competitions and vice versa. Uh, October 8th, we have a uh, people competition. The deadline for that is September 20. I don't think it's the 22nd. It must be the 29th. Uh, it's basically nine days before uh, the competition. Um, we also have some upcoming field trips. Uh, the first one is actually tomorrow, this weekend, um, Cleveland National Air Show. Uh, that, the, the tickets that we bought for that, the box seats, are all sold out with the exception of, I have one ticket here that somebody was not able to use. Is there anyone that is interested here in buying this ticket? It's $30. No takers? OK, we're waiting on a phone call, so somebody may be buying it. So if you're thinking about it, uh, you got to decide quickly. Um, but even if you don't have uh, one of our tickets, um, I believe it's open to the public, and you can get in and get some great action shots there. Um, on September 24th, uh, there will be a Belgian draft horse show, um, and that is uh, in, I can't remember the name of the city now, um, basically uh, south of here in Ohio. Uh, it is members only. They've asked us to limit the number of photographers to 20 per day. So this, the 24th is actually a Friday, so this is Friday and Saturday. Uh, there is... Um, uh, a lot more details on the website. So if you're interested in something like that, you know, take a look at the website and you can get some more information about that show. Um, some other items that are not official field trips, but they're things that might be of interest to photographers. Uh, the Chagrin Valley Camera Club is having a Zoom meeting with Don Komarechka, uh, who has spoken here at the club, and he's going to be giving a Zoom presentation on macro. So if you're interested in that, uh, the Chagrin Valley Camera Club has invited our members to attend. Uh, you need to contact the president of the club to get to give him your information so he can get you the Zoom link. And again, that information it will be on our calendar. On September 18th and also October 18th is Buckin, Ohio, a rodeo show uh, down south of Lodi. So uh, another opportunity to get some great action shots. September 18th and 19th, there's two different things going on, so that's a very busy weekend. Uh, there is a Civil War reenactment in Zor, Ohio, which is south of Canton, um, and we've heard it's a really good one, so if you're interested in the Civil War and taking pictures at an enactment, uh, head down to Zor. And then September 18th and 19th also, there is a balloon fair in Ravenna, Ohio. Uh, unlike the Chagrin uh, Valley one that we attend, um, you won't be able to get on the field next to the balloons, but uh, it still would be a great opportunity to get some great uh, shots, some colorful shots of balloons. Uh, I want to call your attention to the fact that fall classes have actually started. Uh, we are still open for enrollment, in particular for Photoshop and Lightroom. Uh, Wednesdays, uh, we, last Wednesday we had our first Fundamentals of Good Photography, uh, and that'll continue on for the next uh, 11 weeks. Uh, Saturday, starting Saturday the 11th of September, we will have Photoshop editing, uh, kind of an intro to Photoshop. Those are pretty much all-day classes. Um, Mondays, we will have Intermediate Photoshop, and Tuesdays, uh, Lightroom Classic. And I now that I look at that, I think it's the other way around. I believe it's Monday is the Lightroom Classic, and Tuesdays is Intermediate Photoshop. So I'll have to correct that slide. 
But there is still time to sign up, especially for the Photoshop and Lightroom classes. So check the calendar on that. Uh, if you have some interest in that, um, you know, you can sign up through the website or uh, get in touch with us at info at clevelandphoto.org. Um, and you can watch this in most of our Friday evening meetings at your convenience on our YouTube channel. So you can get the link on our uh, CPS website homepage. Or if you go to YouTube, open YouTube and search for Cleve Photographic, and you can see the meetings that we have put out on YouTube. Tonight's meeting will be out there on YouTube. The ones that aren't there, when we have outside speakers that have requested that the uh, presentations be for members only, we will not be putting those on, out on YouTube. We will record them, and we will make them available down the road to, to members. Okay, and we do invite you to subscribe to our channel and uh, choose to be notified whenever there's a new video that's posted. So again, welcome to the first uh, black and white photo competition of the year. Uh, tonight we have 94 images, 53 black and white, and 41 pictorial images. Uh, and let's introduce our judges for the evening. The judges are remote, so we will have people reading uh, the judges' comments, but let's go through who they are. Tom Croce uh, was originally from the Cleveland area. He does run a fine art photography business in southwestern Ohio. He got a BED degree from Miami University of Fine Art in 1984. He's a he has a master's of architecture degree from Washington University in St. Louis, and he got that in 1987. He's a freelance photographer with more than 30 years' experience. He, wor he has work published by National Geographic, Landscape Photography Magazine, and the NANPA Expressions 2016, a publication of the North American Nature Photography Association's top 25, 250 images. Excuse me. And who will be reading Tom? Uh, Bill Keaton will be reading Tom's comments tonight. Uh, our second judge is Mel Stone. He was born in 1942 in a small farmhouse outside of Solway, Minnesota. Uh, he earned a BA in chemistry at St. Olaf College and an MA in economics and mathematics at the University of North Dakota and a PhD in economics, University of Colorado Boulder. He taught at the university level for a few years and then got bitten by the uh, TV news bug and so for about 30 years, he was a one-man band. He was a photographer, a reporter, a writer, and an editor. In 2005, he bought his first digital camera and a high-quality printer. And now that he's retired, and he says sort of retired, he sells his photography at the Las Cruces Farmers and Crafts Market and in his gallery, in Mes uh, his gallery the Mesquite Art Gallery. So who will be reading for Mel? Dave Sborak will be reading for Mel. And our final judge is Dan Rowland. Uh, he claims to have been a husband, father, soldier, student, teacher, and laborer, and foremost, an artist. He has been a photographer for more than 35 years uh, with work that has been included in many private and juried shows. He has won awards for both his fine art and commercial photography. He has an extens extensive Back, film background uh, and has been a student of the zone system for almost 20 years and feels it is still relevant today. He says he does not shoot any one genre with any frequency and many times has found himself photographing architecture, portraits, and products in his studio and outside shooting landscapes all within the same week. He has a studio in Akron where he shoots commercial photography and teaches photography and post-processing. And his work may be viewed at www.danrowlandphotography.com. And Dan will be read by Eric Wethington. All right, so for those that, are, that may be new to competitions, there are certain judging criteria that we follow, we ask the judges to follow. Uh, each judge will score an image on a scale of five to nine. And the final score then for the image is the total of all three judges' scores. Imagers are judged on three criteria, impact, composition, and technique. So tonight we're going to start with our black and white images. And I'm going to kind of move over here. The 
Dan says, nice portrait. I feel that is a little too dark with the highlight and midtones being able to come up about one full stop. This will also bring up the shadows a bit so they're not almost solid black. It may be that your monitor is too bright. Many are. Mine is calibrated for color and brightness. A more accurate measure is it to look at the curve in Photoshop and see where your highlights fall. Okay, the image is called Amish Boy uh, by Richard Ader, 21 points. Mel says, ice reflection in the white bird really stands out. I wonder what it would look like if you opened up the reflection below the bright leaves and the shore just a tad. The image is called An Egret Evening by Cynthia Smith, 21 points. Tom says, I think the narrative of this guy living in a tent is very important social issue. I wish there was more context so I knew why he's living in a tent. Overall, the image is soft. I would really like to see his face in focus. When you frame it, if you moved, had moved to the right to reposition the man farther to the left in the frame, it would have shown more of the tent. The image is called Austin Tent Camp, black and white, by Gary Marich. 19 points. Dan says, beautiful image and great framing of the lighthouse. Your contrast really shows up the detail of the wood while maintaining highlight and shadow detail. The image is called Beach Window by Jackie Sieski. 25 points, second place. Mel says, did you know these are called crepuscular rays and they are parallel? They just seem to converge like railroad tracks in the distance. I wonder what it would look like if the sky were a little darker and had more contrast. The image is called Black and White Sunset by Elda Baroni, 20 points. I think the toning works well with this image, Tom says, giving it an antique feel. The tonal range looks good and the vignette is well done. I would have framed it so as to leave a little more space in front of the boat so it has some room to move. The image is called Blue Nose 2 by Nancy Kakelik, 22 points. Dan says, this one I felt was too dark. Your highlights seem to fall around zone 8 and your midtones could come up about a half a stop. Also, the horizon can be leveled without affecting the composition. The image is called Bubble Man by Roger Summer, 24 points, third place. Mel says, a lot of nice texture. Did you try this in landscape orientation? If our eyes automatically look up and down, portrait mode is a good choice. Here it seems our eyes go front to back. Of course, I could be way off here. The image is called Cell Block by Vicki Wirt, 24 points, third place. Tom says this is very nice, the tonal range is good, and the simplicity and the graphic nature makes for a very strong image. My imaginations take the narrative in lots of directions. The composition in the frame works very well. I would have rotated the chair very slightly to the right so it is perfectly straight onto the camera. I also would have tried moving the chair to the left so the joint in the pavement is centered on the chair and it would have made the gray area poking out behind the chair on the right larger. Or I would have moved the chair to the right, centered between the two lines in the pavement, which might have required you to recompose a bit. The image is called Chair in Sun by Jane Sidney, 25 points, second place. Dan says, I like the graphic moody black and white in the, in the one. The high contrast helps to convey the mood of the image. If I were to make su a suggestion, it would be to rotate the image slightly counterclockwise to correct for everything that is leaning to the right. The image is called Chandelier in Snowstorm by Glenn Petranik, 25 points, second place. 
Mel says. Just enough included in the frame to make it interesting without being too busy. He seems awfully static. Did you have him walk in and try to shoot a more dynamic shot? And maybe the face could be a little more light sculpted. The image is called Chattanooga Choo Choo by Susan Bestel. 25 points, second place. Tom says the tonal range in this image is very good. I think the black trees works very well. I might have tried to burn in the daffodils a bit to help enhance the shadows a bit. I also might have tried a different composition, getting down low so the flowers can make a very strong foreground element and moving the horizon away from the middle of the frame. The image is called Daffodil Hill by Vicki Wirt, 23 points. Dan says, I really like this image, but I felt it could do with a bit more contrast. It seems just a little flat. The image is called Dandelion Drops by Lori Zorns, 26 points, first place. Mel's comment is, very clean. No doubt what the subject is. Did you try some slight dodging and burning? to give it a little more pop, and the eye is very flat. The image is called Flamingo Black and White by Richard Ader, 25 points, second place. Tom says this is a nice composition and the lighting is good as it can be difficult to get an exposure without blowing the highlights. I think the softness of the petals works well I wish the statement had more detail and contrast. I might have lowered the camera a bit so the entire statement was above the pedal entirely in the dark area of the background. The image is called Flower Macro by Dan Lester, 23 points. Dan says, the power of the locomotive is evident in this photo as it belches smoke and steam. I would prefer that the subject not be centered, but maybe a little more to the left side with the tracks used as leading lines to guide the viewer into the photo and giving the train a place to go in the photograph. I know you have to work with the train schedule, but photographing at a different time of day would help with the contrast to help you give you a better photograph. The image is called Full Steam Ahead by Serena Cernick, 22 points. Mel's comment, very clean. A vignette might make him stand out a little more. And did you try sculpting his face with some dodging and burning? The image is called Gandalf the White by Bill Keaton, 26 points, first place. Tom says, this is a wonderful portrait. It has great tones. The composition and lighting are both very well done. My only issue is with the hat. It seems very inconsistent with the military uniform. I might have shot a much tighter portrait with less emphasis on the uniform or ask him to remove the hat. The image is called General Sherman by Dave Saborik. 25 points, second place. Dan says, you did well to spot these flowers against a dark background. I'm sure they really stood out. I feel your photo overall has too much contrast. You have lost both the highlights in the flowers and in the shadow details in the tree trunk behind. Your camera sensor doesn't see the way you see when shooting on a bright sunny day. It is difficult to capture both. The image is called Goose Flowers Black and White by Gary Marich, 21 points. Mel's comment, nice action, nice contrast, love the dust. Of course, I love photographing horses. Too bad the cowboy's face is obscured. The image is called Horse Drive Number 5, Black and White by Ron Wilson, 25 points, second place. This is very well done, Tom says. 
The composition, the lighting, and the exposure are beautifully done. I would have moved the chair on the right a bit to the left in order to balance the spacing. Overall, I think it is a very compelling image. The image is called House of Will's Chairs by Glenn Petranik. 25 points, second place. Dan says, great capture of a hummingbird in flight. I know the difficulties you faced. I like the contrast you have on the subject, but would like to see one with the background really dark, but not black. The image is called Hummer on Cardinal Flower by Belinda Prince. 22 points. Mel's comment. The fireworks and the lights work nicely together. A lot of the other elements, especially the people in the lower left, are almost lost in the darkness and framing and add very little to the shot. Emphasizing the rim light may help that. The image is called Independence by Rick Carroll, 23 points. A nice close up, Tom says. The exposure is well done. I'd like to see more contrast and detail in the stamen and I think the image would benefit from more depth of field. I might have used a different camera angle to get the entire stamen against the light flower petals. The image is called Inside Flower by Dan Lester, 21 points. Dan says, I love the sharpness and the feeling of texture in this photo. Overall, I think it's too dark with your highlights on the front of the leaf falling between zone six and zone seven. Overall, I think it'd come up, it could come up a full stop, maybe a little more. I also found the white dust specks a little distracting. The image is called Lotus by Jane Sidney, 23 points. Mel says, Fairly clean shot, not too many distracting elements. But overall, the image seems a little flat. And what should I look at? What draws my eye? The image is called Mansfield Reformatory Library by Melanie Plummer, 22 points. Tom says there's a very good tunnel range in this image. I think the graphic quality of the net and the post work well, but I feel this image is in search of a subject. I see several possible images within this image. Some of the details of the posts or the overlapping grid of the nets, the knots, those kinds of things. Working the scene to find the image you want to make or to express what you want to say. The image is called Medina Soccer Field by Eric Wethington, 20 points. Dan says, I love the symmetry in this image, but it seems a little flat. The whole photograph could be brightened to full stop and the contrast increased a bit without losing the highlight detail. The image is called M Milwaukee Museum of Art Interior Window by Melanie Plummer, 23 points. Mel's comment. Animal lovers are sure to coo how cute. But to me, the image lacks pop. I wonder what dodging the class hands would do. I didn't really pick up on that at first. The image is called Orangutans by Dave Saboric, 23 points. This is a very nice street scene, Tom says. The tones are very nicely done, just a couple of nitpicky things. The first is the corner of the windshield support is converging with the guy's forehead and the building column is coming right out of the middle of the woman's head. Taking a step or two to the right would have solved both. I also might burn the highlights in the background just a bit. The image is called Out for a Ride by Serena Cernick, 20 points. Dan says, nice job capturing the industrial feel of this locomotive. You have done well in keeping your shadow details, helping your subject uh, stand out more from the dark background. 
I think you can bring out your highlight details down a bit on the left side. So some of the highlights are not are some of the highlights now are blown out. The image is called Ready for a Coat of, coat of Paint by uh, Rich Foley, 21 points. Mel's comment, another clean shot. But if you're not a train lover, do you care? Maybe some contrast, some dodging and burning would give it some life. The image is called Roundhouse Engine by Debbie Leesky, 24 points, third place. Tom says, I like the feel of this image. I think you could go even a bit darker on the right side of the image, add a bit of mystery. Overall, it is a very nice image with good contrast and tonal range. I would like to see a little more separation between the bench and the stone wall. They are very close in their tone. I feel the vignette is a bit too strong, maybe if it was feathered just a bit more. The image is called Salvatore the Basket Maker by Jacqueline Murray. Uh, 22 points. Dan says, awesome job capturing all the details in every muscle. The lighting and texture lend a lot of power to a powerful image. Overall, I think the entire image could come up about half to three quarters of a stop with a slight increase in contrast to really make it pop. The image is called Six Pack by Jackie Sieski. 24 points, third place. Mel says, more of us should probably document these times. It is interesting how he's in a third and looking the other way. The image is called Stay Safe by Nancy Kakelik, 22 points. Tom says, I think this is a very cool image. It has a kind of Twilight Zone feel. I keep coming back to the door opening essentially in the middle of the frame. Typically, when we put something in the middle of the frame, it keeps us from entering the frame. But this open door, just by the nature of being in the open door, invites us to enter and wonder what's on the other side. The image is called The Door by Bob Koaleski, 25 points, second place. Dan says, good use of framing to isolate the sky. Overall, the entire image is too dark with a total loss of shadow detail. If it was composed as a silhouette, the sky needs to be brighter and the horizon line should be a little bit more level. Uh, the image is called View Out My Back Window by Fran Marino, 20 points. Mel's comment. Appears nicely candid and good non-distracting background. An interesting black and white processing the hair and face. Nicely sculptural. The image is called Zach by Elizabeth Klanick, 21 points. Nice composition, Tom says. The reflections in the water are very nice. The tone in the lower left is nice. But the rest of the image, especially the right half, are pretty flat and could use more contrast. The image is called Zion by Bob Koaleski, 18 points. Dan's comment is, a beautiful black and white image. Your contrast, composition, and focus are all spot on. I don't know if I would change a thing. The image is called Balance and Control by Susan Bestel, 24 points, third place. Mel's comment, nice catch lights. I would what it would look like if the baby's right arm were lightened a tad. Ditto for the upper left background. The image is called, I lost my place here, bear with me, Contentment by Cynthia Smith, 20 points. 
Beautiful image of the flower, Tom says. The exposure spot on, great texture on the petals. <laughs> I might try to darken the background and the leaves a bit. The flower would pop a bit more. Very nice job. The image is called Dazzling Black and White Dahlia by Elda Baroni. 24 points, third place. Dan's comment, I really like this elephant shot. There are very few subjects that lend themselves to the extreme contrast of just black and white. Very imaginative. Well done. The image is called Ella I, Black and White by Ronald Wilson, 24 points, third place. Mel's comment, love the clouds and choppy water. I wonder what this image would look like if you were a little or maybe a lot lower and were clearly on a third. Also, what if the clouds were darker and building and the building a tad lighter? The image is called Fairport Light from the Lake by Dennis Wirt, 21 points. Tom says, I love the feel of this image. The fact that there is not a lot of tonal range helps to reinforce the feeling of the foggy morning. I would have tried to move it a few feet to the right so that the last tree on the right does not converge with the tree branch next to it. The image is called Foggy Morning by Debbie Leesky, 25 points, second place. Dan says, nice candid portrait. Your subject really captures the viewer's attention. Overall, I feel your background is too light, drawing your eyes away from the subject. It also feels a little over sharpened. The image is called Follow Me by Rick Carroll, 20 points. Mel's comment, not sure what this is, but that may be the point. Symmetrically abstract. What if the light areas were even lighter and you also played around with the dark areas? The image is called Giant Spider Lily by Roger Summer, 22 points. Wonderful portrait, Tom says. Beautifully lit, composed, and exposed with just the right amount of detail with a beautiful background. The way the hair curves around the eye, the details in the eye, the smoke all come together to really bring this portrait to life. The image is called Lost in Gothic Thought by Bill Keaton. 26 points, first place. Dan says, I like the moody feel and the leading lines of the path leading to the figure in the background. I don't feel the high contrast works in this case and would have liked to see a little bit more detail in your highlights and shadows. I also feel a much tighter crop to help eliminate some of the distractions surrounding the figure. The image is called Plum Creek Walker by Eric Wethington, 20 points. Mel's comment. I think we all would like to capture this type of movement. But I'd experiment with a higher shutter speed and a higher ISO. The right foot is quite soft. I'd also be nice to experiment with different lighting and hence shadows. The image is called Revelry in Black and White by Elizabeth Klanick, 22 points. Tom says, very nice portraits of the snowy. I think the composition works well and is well exposed. I might try burning in the highlights in the correction, burning in the highlights in the background just a bit. It will help give a bit more depth to the image. I would also try adding a bit more contrast to its face to see if you can pull out just a little bit more detail. The image is called Snowy in the Snow by Lori Zorns, 25 points, second place. Dan says, really interesting subject and composition. I like that you have chosen to display the main subject upside down 
and not in the manner traditionally seen for a watch clock photo. Overall, I think there's too much contrast and you've lost your shadow details. You could bring them up quite a bit and still have the main attention on the subject. The image is called Time Waits for No One by Fran Marino. 24 points, third place. Mel's comment, nicely isolated and nice subtle shadows on the petals. I think you probably wanted a straight on look, but I sure would experiment with different compositions and framing. The image is called White Orchids by Rosemary Flanagan, 26 points, first place. All right, that brings us to our pictorial images. Uh, some of these are no comment images. Um, typically, we ask the judges to uh, comment on 25 to 30 images, and anything beyond that, uh, we just pick out the images that people have asked for comments. So I'm going to go through the first set of images that are non-comment and read the maker and the score. So our first image is A Glimpse at Sunset by Bill Keaton, 22 points. Alpine Grazer by Dennis Wirt, 21 points. Droplets on White Flowers by Ron Werman, 23 points, honorable mention. Fairport Harbor, Standing on Ice by Rick Mills, 22 points. Fairport Harbor, Cold as Ice by Rick Mills, 23 points, honorable mention. Ferry by Eric Wethington, 23 points, honorable mention. Ford Trimotor by Roger Summer, 25 points, second place. Hello Dolly by Sarah Zietlow, 24 points, third place. Hide and Go Seek by Elizabeth Klanick, 24 points, third place. Lake Erie Storm by Marge Brady, 23 points, honorable mention. Uh, Lower Affelder Falls by Ron Werman, 23 points, honorable mention. Mabry Mill by Susan Bestel, 23 points, honorable mention. Monarch by Lori Zorns, 24 points, third place. Neighborhood by Ronald Wilson, 22 points. Pickup Sticks by Fran Marino, 21 points. Uh, Ride 'em Cowgirl by Marge Brady, 23 points, honorable mention. Snuggling Snails by Jacqueline Murray, 22 points. Solo by Rick Carroll, 23 points, honorable mention. The Next Generation by Cynthia Smith, 21 points. Trillium in the Rain by Rosemary Flanagan, 24 points, third place. Up, Up and Away by Rich Foley, 23 points, honorable mention. Wade Oval by Debbie Leesky, 23 points, honorable mention. Weeping Trees by Dennis Wirt, 20 points. All right, the remaining images are uh, comment images. So 
start with this one. Tom says this is a good exposure with a very dramatic sky. I think the feel of the image works very well. I question including the fence in the frame. I don't think it is contributing to the narrative. For me, the picture is about the lighthouse and the approaching storm, and I'm not sure what the fence helps. All right, the image is called A Beacon by Bob Koaleski, 20 points. Dan says, a great shot of the city skyline at twilight. There's a lot to see and a lot of color to which to work with. Overall, I feel the centerpiece should be about one stop lighter, and the colors could pop a little bit more if adjusted through camera raw. The image is called Blue Hour San Diego by Melanie Plummer, 21 points. Mel's comment? Clean and simple. Nice placement, nice background. Not sure I have any suggestions, maybe a little more contrast in the flowers, maybe a vignette, maybe a touch darker background, but this is really quibbling. The image is called Chive Garlic Flower by Ron Werman, 24 points, third place. Tom says, I think this is a good attempt. The building is nicely exposed although I would apply some perspective correction to straighten the verticals. But I think you need a way for more stars to make this a dramatic, compelling image. The image is called City Hall by Rich Foley, 21 points. Dan says, I love this portrait of this guy, though he seems a little dubious about having his picture taken. You have done a great job with this one. You have all your highlights and shadows under control, and it doesn't appear over sharpened, allowing the texture to come through. The image is called Civil War Stair by Richard Ader, 25 points, second place. Mel's comment, tranquil scene. I would like to see more contrast, darker sky, Vernon dodged the hills and grass in front of the house, but generally adjust them to give the house more punch. Unwork the house itself to make it stand out more. The image is called Craig Abandoned House by Gary Marich, 19 points. Tom says the picture is well exposed with good detail. I feel the vignette is a bit overdone and the dandelion feels a bit too contrasted. I really, really feel like I could have gotten in much tighter to really explore all the details and textures. The image is called Dandy by Dan Lester, 22 points. Beautiful work with this flower, Dan says. Your exposure captures all of the color and the brightness and the depth of field of the subject against the dark background, and that holds the viewer's attention. The image is called Day Lily Wabi Sabi by Dave Saborik, 24 points, third place. Mel says, quite unusual view and or framing, but effective. Not sure I have any valuable suggestions. Maybe dodge the white in the flower and darken the green leaves to see how that works. The image is called Edge by Jane Sidney, 24 points, third place. Tom says this is a great perspective. I love the ideal, the eye detail and the tiny water drops. The lighting in the background looked great. I would like some more depth of field so the antenna are sharp. The image is called Eye to Eye with a Butterfly by Sarah Zietlow, 23 points, honorable mention. Dan says, I really like the warm tone of this portrait against the darker background. Your use of depth of field and contrasting tones really helps keep the viewer engaged. 
The image is called Lady Troubadour by Marge Brady, 25 points, second place. Mel says, nice work getting that low. I like low because very few, few people look at things from a low angle. So right off the bat, you've got something unique. Maybe you could work on the long twisty log to make it stand out more and dodge the lighter parts of the bridge so it's more obvious. The image is called Lock 29 Long Stump by Rick Mills, 21 points. Tom says, I think this is a nice portrait with nice light. I think a tighter crop might have worked a little better. A lot off the right and just below her hands. She's looking almost straight at the camera, which flattens her face a bit. I might have had her rotate her head a little bit to her right not enough to cover any part of her eye, but would cast a small shadow that would give some dimension to her face. The image is called Look at Me by Serena Cernick, 22 points. Dan's comment, this is, re this is a really interesting subject and I hope you get to photograph it again. I love the red that the building against the green trees but the processing, whether it be HDR or over sharpening, really doesn't do any favors to the finished photograph. Try processing another image from the original with less effect. The image is called Schools Out by Glenn Petranik, 21 points. Mel says, nice, simple sunset. Matt Claus. Klauskowski offer a seminar where he suggests the sky should seldom be over a third of the frame. Some agreed with him, some didn't. But check it out and see how it affects this image. That vertical element to the right of the house is distracting. The image is called Sunrise Near Rye Beach by Nancy Kakelik. 23 points, honorable mention. Tom says, looks like a very nice skyline. It looks a bit underexposed and overall the image is very flat, lacking contrast. The vignette is not really helping you, maybe feathering it out some more. I can't help but feel like maybe this image could have gone more in the graphic direction Embrace the flat light. I might try cropping off most of the water and some of the left side, just to the right of the first office building. The image is called Tam's Winter Highlight, uh, Winter Twilight, excuse me, Jacqueline Murray, uh, 22 points. Beautifully captured image, Dan says. I love that you have kept all the highlight detail and uh, all the highlight and shadow details and have carried the focus from one end to the other. It is really an engaging piece. The image is called The Rookery Staircase by Jackie Sieski, 24 points, third place. Mel's comment. Again, clean, simple, on the third, pleasing. Maybe a little more contrast in the flowers, darker, darker lights, lighter. And while you're at it, darken the greens a tad to see if that makes the flower pop a little more. The image is called Water Lily by Vicki Wirt, 26 points, first place. And that concludes tonight's competition. Uh, we want to thank all of our judges and all of those who read the judges' comments. We appreciate that. Um, thanks to all of you who entered the competition. We strongly encourage you to uh, enter future competitions. It's a great way to kind of hone your skills and become better at photography. Um, if you do have some feedback, please send it to us at info at clevelandphoto.org.
And so that concludes tonight's event. If you would like some more information about competing, or if you're interested in joining the Cleveland Photographic Society, please visit our website at www.clevelandphoto.org. So good night, everyone, and stay safe. <laughs>